All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Virtual Agent Academy. As always, please be sure to visit our Virtual Agent Academy community at community.servicenow.com. There you'll, you'll be able to explore best practices and update content. You'll see uh, articles and blogs written by our product managers and subject matter experts. Use the experience of others, ask questions, give answers, and learn all the latest we have about our product. If you're watching us on YouTube, click the subscribe button to see more content such as this, as well as all our previous Virtual Agent Academy recordings. That's also Those are also available on our community site. If you like what you're seeing, click the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. What I'd also like to share is that we also have other products that do academies. Our mobile academy is every alternating, every other alternating Tuesday morning slash afternoon. And we have an HR academy that is on every fourth Tuesday of the month. And let's welcome to the welcome everyone to the main event. This in this webinar, we're going to gain insights into your virtual agent with conversational analytics. So our guest speakers today are Yuko Araki, who is a product manager for conversational interfaces, returning champion Gaurav Goyal, who is a software engineer with uh, the team, and myself, Victor Chen. So just a brief overview of what we're going to cover today. We're going to do an overview of the conversational analytics, what it is, and when it's available. And then Yuko and Gaurav are going to do an exercise as to uh, give us a tour of conversational analytics and how to explore all your analytics metrics, edit them, uh, filter them, et cetera. And then finally, we will do Q&A. Throughout the uh, webinar and throughout the exercise, feel free to answer, uh, to ask key questions in the Q&A channel. Uh, and uh, I and others on the call, so there's now folks on the call, will monitor it. So overview. Here for conversational analytics, we're going to enable deep insights into your conversational data with minimum performance overhead on your customer interfaces. You may be familiar with conversational analytics in our Parish release that used uh, PA or performance analytics. Well, in the new Quebec release, we're enabling a whole new um, UX visualization for conversational uh, on analytics. This uh, is using a new technology that work that we in service now internally call Seismic, but it's a brand new UI uh, built on UI Builder. So not only are you able to uh, see and access all these metrics that we're going to go over to in a moment, you will be able to build your own, edit them, modify them, and modify the formula, modify uh, the UI, whether you want to add more metrics or take some out that you feel may not be relevant or important to you. This competition analytics dashboard fulfills the persona of whether you're an executive that looks wants to see the performance of your topic conversation, an author who wants to see the performance of a particular topic or for particular uh, NLU, or a center of excellence just wanting to make sure that everything going on in your conversation in, in your uh, conversations and in your organization is in tip top shape while users uh, self serve and self solve on your, using your virtual agent. Whether uh, it's our out of box data or our filter data, you will most likely be able to find the questions you need in an interactive and easy to use fashion. Some example analytics we have, you can kind of see some in the screenshot we have here, but don't worry if it's unclear. We're going to go, we're going to do a tour in just a bit, but you can see analytics such as uh, usage, so active users, conversations, et cetera, duration of these conversations. We don't want conversation to be too long, so uh, you can track duration of, of folks uh, spending time in virtual agent. The self-solve rate, that's very critical for uh, our customers, right? Our, is virtual agent helping our employees answer their questions without having to uh, go to a live agent or without having a, a bad experience? We want good experiences and, and uh, solutions for our customers. Uh, feedback, right? Uh, after a conversation, there are surveys sometimes. Are those surveys negative or positive? NLUs I mentioned, and a lot more. So conversational analytics, uh, in again, in the Quebec release, is available as a store app. So if you visit our store at ServiceNow, uh, store.servicenow.com, you can uh, install conversational analytics, 
And what's great about this being on a store release as opposed to a biannual family release, Paris, Quebec, Rome, et cetera, is that you can expect more, uh, cons more constant updates than the twice a year updates. So we may provide uh, more UI, uh, more uh, experiences or bug fixes, what have you. They will be uh, more, more frequent than, than just twice a year. Great. So without further ado, I'm now going to hand it over to Yuko and Gaurav to show you uh, conversation analytics. Yuko, Gaurav, take it away. Okay, thank you so much, Victor. Let me share my screen. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so as Victor mentioned, uh, this new uh, conversational Alex dashboard is not called virtual agent dashboard, just to be sure. It's called conversational um, analytics because it is inclusive of metrics of virtual agent and live agent. Um, and we plan to introduce more and more live op uh, agent operational side metrics in the future. How you access this, um, you type in conversational analytics, obviously after you install your store app and right underneath here under collaboration section, you will get the virtual agent dashboard. Once the, the dashboard loads, um, as Victor mentioned, the top overview page will see the uh, um, executive targeting um, metrics, business metrics uh, that you can you can take a look at. How is my instance doing? In a nutshell, um, as you can see, there is a tab structure uh, for this dashboard. Um, overview usage conversations, users, NLU prediction and custom events, and I will go through each one of them uh, very quickly. First, a quick look. Um, how is the active users doing? How are the conversations doing? Uh, what percentage of all of my conversations are at least completing to the end of the topic node and have the positive, um, uh, the po positive uh, um, feedback? And what percentage of topics are completing to the topic end? These are the top metrics that we are creating out of the box for the executive persona. Now, here is the calendar picker. Uh, in most of the cases, you can choose you know, last week, uh, next week, or you can choose custom uh, date range as you wish. For our example, let's choose the last three months. This will dynamically change um, the data in the dashboard, as you can see. If you want to dig further into the active users usage, you can see the trend line, but you can also click into it and see exactly how um, the, the active users increase has been happening. You want to be able to see them on a daily basis or a monthly basis. There are multiple options for you to see the chart. The drilling down into um, the detailed information is very critical for most customers, so really focus on this feature. Um, download will allow you to download um, the Excel sheet in, for this timeline duration. Now, the performance section, here's a category. Um, in Quebec, we introduced the concept of um, associating a topic to a category. So imagine if you are um, an HRSC related um, center of excellence manager. Um, departmental manager, or if you are an ITSM self-service manager, the interest that you have in how my virtual agent is doing is completely different. So I've created the view, uh, depending on who you are. Uh, so th this one is, if you happen to really only care about ITSM, how are my conversations doing? Are they all um, ending well? Um, is everyone going to the live agent transfer? How are the topics being used? What's the dif uh, distribution of the channel? And these are the kind of things that you can see. This only for the conversation that hit the topic that belong in your category. So let's go back to the OBB page. Uh, just really quickly, um, here is the very quick overview of how each of your topics are doing. Uh, here's a distribution of user feedback. Um, the channel distribution and in Quebec, um, 
we are using the interaction table uh, in a column named state uh, and another column named called state reason to track how exactly uh, conversation has ended. So some conversation ended because agent closed the live agent or some conversation is uh, closed because user closed the live agent before the live agent even picked up the phone, uh, picked up the chat. So those are the, the very detailed granular uh, distribution of how the conversation is ending. If you think this is too much, uh, don't worry. Uh, we created a method to group them in the way how you would like to do. So in general, this, this dashboard is editable, not only on the UI side, but also on a data modification side. Um, before I go further into different tabs, uh, let me stop here and see if, um, if there's any questions from the audience. Yeah, you go. Um, one question from the audience from David. How do you determine active users? Active users are the users who have had at least one conversation during this period that you have picked from your calendar picker. Got it. And then another question uh, is from Mary. Will you cover the formula being used to determine the self-solve rate? Yes. I will look, I will show you that. Um, Great, later. thanks. Okay, um, so here was the, the overview page, but it's just imagine that um, you want to dig further into how um, your virtual agent, you know, deployment is doing. Um, specifically, what, what percentage of your conversation is escalating to live agent? or maybe um, depending on who you, your customer in, uh, set up is, maybe the chatbot goes directly to the live agent. So here's a breakdown that you can see, the language breakdown, the duration. Um, and in Quebec, um, we are introducing actionable notifications. So this is a very interesting uh, metrics. After you send an actionable notification and end user is given the notification, some of them click or some of them completely um, ignore. So you want to be able to see what percentage of your actionable notification has been engaged and um, completed a topic. Issue of the resolution is another flagship feature we um, shipped in Quebec. And what this is, is that if an end user filed a ticket before a live agent picks up that ticket um, to handle the issue, um, if there is already an existing topic that matches the, the um, issue that the end user filed, uh, that we will send actionable notifications and the bot will, will try to solve the problem for you. So what this means is that, you know, okay, there was already a topic that says VPN connectivity and the end user filed an issue of VPN connectivity. I want, uh, I have some issue with VPN connectivity on a portal yesterday. They just say that the system will pick up that, hey, there's already a topic, a bot that can probably solve the issue for the same user, will send the issue of the resolution uh, actionable notification, um, and out of which 34 of them, 94% has actually accepted um, and completed an issue. So that's what the issue of the resolution um, metrics would mean. I need to pick up my speed here. Um, another thing I want to be able to show is a very detailed drill down of how each of the conversations are doing. And maybe before going here, if I happen to be an author persona, so we saw the overview, which is for the executive persona, um, a center of excellence who happens to be in the ITSM, the category persona, right? A category, specific category view. We also looked into a little bit of a drill down. Um, you know, subject matter expert type, which happened to be in a usage issue of the resolution. But let's look at the author persona. So if your customer happens to be an author persona and want to be able to fix any topics that may have an issue, we have created out of the box quite many widgets here. Um, the most interesting one is the worst performing topics. Uh, unfortunately, in our industry, we just want to know what's going wrong instead of what's going right. We want to be able to see Huh, interesting, the change in my password seems to be always incomplete. What does incomplete mean? It means that the end user did not finish to the last node of this topic, change my password. Hmm, that's not really good. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. 
transfer to Lime agent. Oh, that's interesting. Whenever this WhatsApp card topic is running, it seems like the end user tends to transfer to Lime agent, which means that this topic is definitely not being useful. So those are, those are what can give you the insight into each of these. Here, Spokes use um, another new Quebec features. We have uh, created a direct integration to integration hub from the virtual agent designer. Um, and so if you want to see what are the types of actions and subflows being used from each of these integration hub um, spokes. So let's just choose Microsoft Azure AD spokes. And I can see that these three actions from the Azure AD spokes have been used. And all of these are used by the parent topic at distribution list. So that's what the spokes metrics are showing. I'd like to go back to the topic issues. So earlier we said uh, something is, seems to be wrong with change my password and the WhatsApp topic isn't doing well. Okay, well, let's go further into what does this actually mean? Here's a list of topics table and you can see, you know, what percentage of have them have been initiated. Seems like show notification is running the most uh, and then change my password. Oh, that's a really bad news because change my password is not always incomplete and yet it's always being initiated, meaning customers and users like to invoke this topic. Hmm. Let's go further into the detail of this topic. What's going on here? As you can see, here's a trend of the usage uh, itself. As usual, you can change the view, daily view versus monthly view. And as we saw earlier, incomplete percentage is quite high, 48%, although not, nobody is, uh, is going into the live agent. And here is where we can see as an author persona, maybe there is something that is causing the end user to drop out in the middle of the topic. Now, forgive me, this is all the, uh, you know, the mock data. Um, so um, the actual node and, and whatnot might not make sense. But uh, based on this information, you can see that whenever you are, we are showing them try again or uh, asking them to yet again, uh, you know, make a decision, a customer seems to be dropping off. So the last visited node is a quite interesting um, uh, information we can provide to the author persona. Let me pause here and collect some questions. Yeah, Yuko, we have uh, a question. Let me go back a bit uh, to Katie. Is there a way to see if a user opened a specific uh, KB article from Virtual Agent, if that article helped the user fix the problem? Yes, um, great question. So I'm currently working on a, um, the next release for August, which is going to make it even easier. However, even in this release that is available as of February, we can do that. How do we do? So as an author, you know which topic is actually the one that is showing um, the KB article. KB article can be shown to the customers either by having a contextual topic, a block inside a particular topic, or KB article is being shown because of um, AI search topic block. So we have created a special section where um, there is a topic block usage. So in this case, AI search topic block usage or contextual search topic block usage, which will give you the distribution and execution count of what topics and how many times that search has been shown to the end user. Additionally, if you're interested in the number of users that hit a particular search result, you go to the users list, okay? And from here, you will see, I want to see the number of users that had the conversation. And from here, you can say, you know, I know that there is a um, topic and there is a topic that is called, let's just say, printer issues, which I have included a contextual search topic block in it. And, and whenever you hit this printer issues, I know that end users are hitting the search topic block. So this is the way to um, see how many results, how many users, unique users have actually had the conversation that happened to have used this particular topic 
and have this um, uh, uh, you know, completion stages to be completed. But furthermore, if you know specific node happen to have had a search topic block, what you can do is go here, topic node. Um, so what I'm doing here is that I'm looking at all conversation, all users list. This is all the users list from the calendar picker that we talked about earlier. Um, that happened to have hit a topic called printer issues, which had the topic node and the topic node name happened to be uh, set search query. With this, I know how many users actually were served with regard to the printer issues and saw the search query. Um, yeah. That would be the list. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going this on an ad hoc basis based on what you ask me on the question. So maybe it's not giving you enough users, but um, this is a level of filtering that you can do. I hope that I answered your question. Any other questions? Uh, we have, let's leave questions at the end. Uh, given our time constraints, let's uh, go into some of the ways you can uh, create custom events or perhaps modify metrics and some, something along that angle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so just, just before going there, um, there is also an NLU tab, just want to show you that. Here's an NLU prediction uh, trend and you can change the weekly, daily, and here's the list of the top topics in order of usage that match the prediction if you are NLU enabled on a per topic level. Um, but what, okay, so what um, uh, Victor was saying is that, as I said earlier, uh, this dashboard is not only configurable from a UI perspective, but also from a data perspective. So let me show you how you change the UI. So let me, let's just say that, um, you know, on the overview page, I want to add another uh, scorecard here. The four isn't enough. I want like another one here. And that, the way how you do that is you here go here and you click on the edit page. And this is a new IB builder page, uh, completely built on a new um, UI framework. And what you would do is you edit an original scope and you click over here and you add um, data visualization. Um, you can add another, let's just say, another widget here. You add a data source, you click on a table. So you get the idea. This is exactly how you would um, pick. Uh, I don't know, let's just click anything. Um, you know, do you want the single score? Do you want the lines, um, horizontal bar? So this is how you would add your own uh, widget. So that if you want to make the changes and add other widgets that comes, that where the data comes from the glide table, um, change and manipulate the feel and look of this dashboard. That was with regard to the UI builder. Now, let me talk about how you want to add your very specific um, data, including the previous question that I got, which is how do I change the formula of the self salt Now, how do you do that is first, let's talk about specific data, not changing the existing formula, but specific data. Although I have given you so many out of the box widgets, which is even configurable through the filtering, Maybe you still want something that is very special to you. And how do you do that? You created a mechanism called custom events. And custom events will always come out like this. And I'll just show you how you build this. Earlier, I typed in conversational analytics and show the virtual agent dashboard. Immediately underneath it, with the exact same store app, you will get the event configuration and the formula override module. If you go to the event configurations, this is where you would be creating a brand new event that would be sent from the virtual agent server to the dashboard backend. The dashboard backend would understand whenever such event occurs and tries to create, auto create a uh, pie chart or the line chart on behalf of you. So I created this earlier. Let's go take a look at this. 
some customers gave me a feedback that um, this customer is always tracking what their executives experiences with the, with the virtual agent because whenever uh, the, the um, CTO or CIO um, experiences the internal virtual agent and hits an issue, they get a call and they don't they want to uh, avoid that scary call from their executive. So they want to be always monitoring what's going on with the VIP usage. So here's the thing, you know, you create a custom um, uh, event, um, you know, you source table from a conversation because you're trying to track what's happening with the VIP conversation. And all the condition is that from consumer, you know, consumer fields, and we happens to be a VIP is true. And um, it's a, properties of maybe we will say, how is this doing with regard to, I don't know, um, you know, conversation type, submit. And when you submit, what this will happen, and by the way, this is an event, so it will only go for the moving forward events. Um, here, you will get that if I have another conversation as that VIP um, and run the conversation, you will see another event coming in. And that event will be the VIP, what did I name it? Uh, it was the VIP usage trend, event will show up and it will automatically create the trend line of that occurrences of the VIP having a conversation. And I think I created a um, event property which should be the conversation type. So this will be the conversation type which happens to be the distribution of VA uh, only versus VA live agent escalation and some other properties I can create multiple uh, properties that are related to the VIP. So this is how you would create your own custom events that only you care about that might not be included in one of my out of the box widgets. Um, and so that's custom events. Another thing to note um, earlier question, how do you change this self soul rate um, definition? That you will go to the formula override. In formula override, um, you have an option to change a formula for duration, self-solve, and state feedback. So let's look at self-solve rate formula override. This is a uh, quick uh, script value that you can change. As you can see, uh, what we're doing is that out of the box when live agent transfer is um, not happening and the feedback is positive, um, we are calling that, and the topic is actually complete state equals complete. We're calling those conversations to be successful. Um, if you want to change that definition, um, you can do that coming here and change the formula and the self solve rate will change. Any questions? That was great, Yuka, thanks. Uh, we have one question about uh, issue auto resolution from Mary. Is the system smart enough to know if the customer attempted to use the identified topic and was unsuccessful? Now I can probably answer the first half. We do, uh, we can identify the topic being used. As to whether it was, whether success, how would you, uh, how would you address that, Yuko? I wonder if, are you asking if we are tracking a specific sys user ID to see if that user had already tried a virtual agent uh, yesterday um, and instead decided to file a ticket? Um, the quick answer is no. Uh, the premise here is that we assume a lot of end user just likes to file a ticket without even knowing the existence of the virtual agent. Um, so whenever they go to a portal or some other, mis uh, some other means, um, we try to uh, detect if the same topic exists in the virtual agent. And basically this is the introduction to virtual agent uh, for an end user who probably didn't even know existed. And we will send the actionable notifications to Slack or Teams or um, and, uh, you know, that type of uh, uh, method, you know, messaging channel. Uh, for them to complete their task. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a good point. I'll just add that um, customers would probably have to play a little bit of detective as well, or uh, you know, analyst as, as well, because uh, uh, issue 
auto resolution or IAR do use virtual agent topics, which we do have analytics on, whether by default or any, any of them that you create. So it, it, is, po it is possible to determine whether uh, topics were directed or open via issue out of resolution. And then from there kind of filter, slice and dice the data to figure out whether they were completed and successful or whether someone got stuck. Um, are there any, uh, if there are any other questions, feel free to type them out in the, in the Q&A. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if anything comes in. Uh, uh, sorry? Role. Yeah, we have the um, conversation on Alex admin and the viewer role that we created. Okay, so that's, that's addressing Katie's uh, question. Do we have, do you need a specific role to have access to be able to edit the dashboard? Uh, I, I assume administrator, Yuko, or anything else that you just mentioned? Yeah, it's a conversational analytics um, administrator role is the Got only it. one you can add it, edit that. Great. Um, great. We'll uh, pause here for further questions. Uh, again, the uh, conversational analytics dashboard is available as a store app. Another thing we wanted to mention is that because the store app, we also have uh, more opportunities to get feedback from you, our customers and our partners. So uh, if you have suggestions to improve analytics or any of our virtualization features, feel free to again, visit our community where we have an idea portal, submit ideas. And if you like other ideas, people submit it, upload them. Our product managers do read the idea portals. Uh, Mary asks, is this available on-prem? Uh, yes, right, Gaurav, actually. This is when I need, oh, God. Gaurav, you understand want... it. Hey, sorry, uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Is yeah, the- sorry, can you repeat it? Yeah, sure. From Mary, is it uh, is this available on prem? E, uh, good question. Yeah, I guess the broad question. Check. Go ahead. Yeah, can, can we check it the back? Yeah. Yeah, I I feel it might not be because we will be uh, transferring uh, data to AppC and then uh, retrieving it. So it might not work on on-prem, uh, but we can double check once. Yeah, something we'll do is um, when once, the, once this video recording is available on YouTube, I'll try to add a comment or try to slip into the description uh, any question that we didn't get to address. Um, another thing I'll mention uh, is that uh, these analytics are being refreshed at a regular cadence via a scheduled batch job. So uh, during your testing or during implementation, uh, you know, data updates won't appear immediately or you know, snap fashion. You just have to wait a couple of minutes uh, for the job to run to, again, get all the data ingest it and, and present it to you uh, on the dashboard is just the heads up there. Uh, great, okay, I think we're gonna wrap it up here unless there's any other questions. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, if there are no other questions, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for staying with us a little bit over. Uh, again, feel free to visit community.servicenow.com for all your questions. And this session will also be recorded and available not only as a link on Community Service Now, but also uh, on YouTube. All right, great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you uh, in the next couple of Tuesdays. Thank you.